Good day, class. Welcome to this tutorial on how to use a dichotomous key. Dichotomous is a Greek word meaning to divide into two branches. You can think of it as driving down a road. You come to a stop and you have two choices. You can turn left or you can turn right. A dichotomous key is a tool created by scientists to help identify organisms from the natural world, such as birds or flowers or insects or trees or fish or bacteria or any living thing you can think of. It's also used to help identify objects from the natural world, such as rocks or minerals or anything else you can think of. It leads the user through a series of steps. We are always given two choices. So down here, you can see a very basic dichotomous key, which is trying to identify fish species. And it's going to start by asking two questions. Does this fish have no scales or does this fish have scales? And based on how we answer that question, you go down a certain path. So let's say we said, yes, it has scales. Then we might ask two more questions. Does this fish have a bony skeleton or does it have a skeleton made out of cartilage? And you would keep going through these series of two questions until you identified the fish species. One way to learn how to use a dichotomous key is to construct a very basic dichotomous key, such as this dichotomous key on vertebrate classes or animals with backbones. There are five major groups or classes. So let's begin with asking ourselves two questions. Does this animal have fur or hair? Or does this animal have no fur or hair? If it does have, if it does have fur or hair, we would say that something like a deer or a moose or a bear or a cougar, and we call these animals mammals. If it has no fur or hair, we have to ask two other questions. Does this animal have feathers or does this animal have no feathers? If it has feathers, we call it a bird. If it has no feathers, we have to ask two more questions again. Does this animal, animal use internal fertilization? That, that means are the eggs of the female fertilized inside her body? Or do they use external fertilization where the eggs of the female are fertilized outside her body? If they use internal fertilization, it's a group of animals called reptiles. In this case, we have an alligator lizard. Now we need to ask two more questions going down the external fertilization pathway. Does the adult have gills or does the adult have no gills? If it has no gills, we call these animals amphibians, such as frogs and salamanders. If the adult does have gills, we would say it's a fish. Here's a more complex dichotomous key that I designed to identify macroinvertebrates that live in BCs, lakes, rivers, and ponds. We're gonna use it to identify two invertebrates. Let's begin with this one. We need to ask ourselves two questions as usual. So we can start over here. Does this animal have shells or does it have no shells? If we look at it, we can see that it definitely does not have a shell. So that takes us down the no legs pathway or legs. And again, we can see by looking at it that it does not have any legs. So now we're on this pathway. Two more questions. Is this animal worm-like or does it have tentacles or brushes or tails? And if we look at it, we can see on its head here, it has these structures, which we would call tentacles. And that takes us down here to this critter right here, large gray with tentacles, which is a crane fly larva, which would be the best way to identify this particular animal. Let's pick another one. Here is another invertebrate or an animal without a backbone. So again, we're gonna start always at the beginning and ask ourselves a series of questions. So does this animal have shells or no shells? And we would look at this animal and we'd say it definitely does not have a shell. So that takes us down to no legs or legs. And if we look at it, it's got three legs on this side and three legs on that side for a total of six. So that takes us down this pathway here, six legs. It doesn't have eight or more, so it has six. So then we have to ask the next series of questions. Does it have no obvious tails or does it have obvious tails? And if we look at it, we can see that it has one, two, three thin obvious tails, which takes us to this group of animals down here. We got one, two, three, four, five animals that all fit into this group with obvious tails. And we can see that there's one, the damselfly larva, 
two, this mayfly larva, and three, another mayfly larva that all have three obvious tails. So you got to pick the one that matches best. In this case, that would be this organism here, one of the mayfly larvas. It has three thin tails and a robust squat body, which would be the best identification.